Welcome back to On TV Mornings with Luann and Tim. I'm joined in the studio now by, look at this bunch. Okay, so I've got Lauren Nanny and I've got Don White. They're both from Algoma University. And then I have um, Adrienne Devono from the Sioux Community Career Center. How'd I do? Good. Great. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for your support. Thanks for coming in so early in the morning to talk about this career conference that's going up, coming up. It's this weekend, is that correct? When is it's the, this what, Thursday. This Thursday. Oh, it's this Thursday. Yep. Wait a sec, that's two days from now. Yep. Ooh, okay. <laughs> I'm glad we're here to talk about this then, because uh, otherwise we would have missed it. Uh, so, <laughs> what, is, what is this conference? What, what's the idea behind it? Who wants to give me a little breakdown on what the conference actually is? Ooh, I could start by okay. maybe just sharing that the conference is, um, the last couple of years, uh, Algoma University and the Sioux Community Career Center have had a lot of discussions about um, we would really like to be working more collaboratively. This past year, we were fortunate to get a grant from the Ministry of Advanced Education and Skills Development. And the grant is focused on um, helping new university gra graduates uh, transition to the workforce. Um, so it's a perfect way for us to partner. Um, and out of that grant, we'll be over the next year having a series of events. This is the first. And so, um, the details, uh, Lauren is the expert on the details. Um, okay, so it's happening this Thursday, May 31st. Okay. Um, it's at the machine shop and it's going to be held from 5.30 to 8. We just decided to do that just because people might be working now. So. Sure, because a lot of people do, um, even, even university students are working, working. part-time yeah. jobs or they're in class, yeah. right, obviously Absolutely. too. Yeah. Are classes still going on right now, you guys? Um, summer classes. Summer yeah. classes yeah. are? Okay. Yeah. Um, so how did, you, you had been partnering with them before, the Sioux Community Career Center had been involved with Algoma U before, or? Well, we had a lot of informal sort of collaborations uh, historically, and now we really wanted to formalize that because uh, one of the things that we're seeing down at the Career Center is a lot of these graduates, these students are coming out of university and um, they realize that the game has sort of shifted, right? Moving from an academic environment into the workplace. And historically we've seen that they're just not prepared for that mind shift, mm -hmm. right? So the Career Center works very closely with helping people understand uh, transitions, helping understand change, what motivates people to change, and to actually acquire the tools and skills to change, to move from that university setting, the academic setting, into the workforce and be able to communicate to employers what employers want to hear. You have those kind of counseling services available? Yeah, yeah, we work really closely uh, as really unique, um, in fact, it's the only program that we have in, in Northern Ontario that really dives down and helps individuals understand what motivates them to do the things that they, that they do and how they can change certain aspects of their approach to situations in order to succeed through change. Because everything's, everything's a change, right? So, uh, people come out of university and they in their, in their, in their skin, they're tentative because it's a whole new world that they're encountering. So by helping them understand how we change, how we sustain change, how we find the motivation for change, and then also putting them um, in contact with employers and uh, helping them tap into that hidden job market here, especially in Sault Ste. Marie. So that's why we're really excited to be um, to be joining Algoma University in this um, in this career ready fund. So, <clears throat> is this uh, strictly Algoma University students that you're targeting, or what is the demographic you're looking at here? Uh, who who are you who are you hoping to show up at this career conference on Thursday, May 31st, at the machine shop from 5:30 until 9? <laughs> eight. <laughs> oh, 5:30 until eight. <laughs> um, we're kind of just getting uh, mainly we're mainly targeting like new graduates, so people that are graduating in June, um, but it's also open to to, um, all Algoma University students and students that are coming from other universities as well. Oh, that really? might be home for the summer. Yeah. Oh, oh so yeah. you don't have to be an Algoma U student to go to this? No, nope, not right? necessarily. We do have a couple registrants that are from other How do people register? Well, you know, well, that's, yeah, well go ahead while I ask okay. that question. Okay. Um, how do people register? They can go on to algomau.ca and there should be a um, more info page and then on there it'll give you the link to register. Okay, great. Yeah. And what outcomes are you hoping to achieve with this? Yeah, I'll jump in on that. So um, the outcomes of this event are not only to give uh, the attendees all this information, all this valuable information that they're going to be able to apply locally as they move into the job, uh, the labor market, but more readily, we want them walking away with something in their hands that they can immediately start using, immediately they can start practically applying to start working their way towards success. So we're going to have a series of uh, really interesting, really engaging, really unique workshops on resume development, on uh, interview skills, on practicing interview, on uh, ongoing uh, learning, on ongoing education strategies. So people will be able to walk out of this event ready to, ready to hit the ground running with a, with a solid, vetted resume 
made by professionals with interview skills so they can field those top questions in interviews that trick a lot of people and trip a lot of people up, especially new job seekers who've never maybe heard those types of things before. So the people will, in attendance will be walking out of this van ready, uh, ready with a lot of options on their hands. That is a really cool approach because, and this has been proven, that if you um, practice um, in situations, role playing, um, you practice that dialogue, you, you get that conversation going in your head, and it gives you the confidence then to when you're in a situation where those things come up, you've got that in your memory, and you can just start pulling those things out, right? It's, it's, it's very, to say, they use the same, um, the same t tactic for anti-bullying, that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. where you, you rehearse and you practice the situation in case it comes up. So the same thing can happen for job interviews. Oh, I'm not bullying. suggesting that people who interview people are bullies. I'm just saying <laughs> that in a situation where there's stress or tension or nerves involved, it's always yeah. great to have that arsenal of uh, those tools in your toolbox, as you say, right? Yeah, well, a lot of people go into those interviews, those first interviews, and they're full, so full of anxiety because they want to they wanna make the, the connection, they want to do it all right there, and they end up self-sabotaging because they haven't acclimated almost to that environment. So we're going to prepare them like this to field the questions and to go in there with a strong resume. Mm -hmm. The other thing that this partnership will really help with is providing recent graduates with the tools to, they, you learn so much in university and you learn so much within a discipline and you learn a lot of critical thinking, but sometimes students have uh, difficulty when they first try and get into the labor market translating what they, what they all those knowledge and skills that they have uh, into the language that the employer is looking for in terms of what skills and knowledge do you have that you can bring to my company. And I think the Sioux Community Career Centre has a lot of expertise there. Yeah, we, we, I mean, daily, we're in conversation daily with, with you know, uh, a bunch of local employers. We're hearing exactly what they want to hear, and they're telling us exactly what they're not hearing. And we're going to be able to share that with university mm -hmm. students. So rather than telling them about the types of things that they studied or learned or know, they can change that and shift that and be able to say, this is what I can do for you. Yeah. And that will lead to success more than another road. So when people, so, so this isn't a job fair, this is, right? No, no. So no. This, isn't, this is not people going in to meet potential employees and market themselves. And th this is about actually learning the skills to go out into the workforce and uh, look for, um, look for employment. Work. Yeah. yeah. Is there a, a cap on the number of people that can come to this? Um, well, we, I think we're going to have roughly 30 people. 30? Yeah. That's, that's great because you, I feel like with 30, you're really going to get the attention yeah. you need. That's pretty intense. Yeah. And it's three, uh, three and a half, two and a half hours? Two and a half two hours. Two and a half hours, yes. Two and a half the hours. other thing, um, do you find, Adrian, that um, students often have skill sets that they might, might not even realize are um, assets when looking for work? There's that whole cross-sector development thing where you might, have tr you might have gone to school for one in one area, mm -hmm. but as it turns out, what you've learned and what you can bring to the table isn't necessarily only in that field, that there's other fields you can go into Right. Where that where your skill and training will be applicable as well, or, be, or, or will be of benefit? Well, that's, I mean, I think that's uh, kind of what Don was talking about, too. That trap that students fall into is that they've been in university, or they've been in school, in an academic environment for so long, that they start to think of the school is organized by skills, or they're organized by knowledge, and the real world is organized by skills. So as soon as you step back from what you've studied or your range of knowledge, you can start identifying things that you have done, these, these skill sets that are applicable. And it's about changing that over. So a history graduate, for example, coming out of that, well, that's an individual who has looked at patterns and has pulled stories out of patterns of data. Now, that's very applicable in roles of, let's say, um, studying finance or uh, working in a job where you're tracking social media content, right, where you pull data out and study the narratives. So these skill sets are there. It's just individuals having to sort of look a little closely and rethink what it is they study yeah. to pull those very marketable skills out of it. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to throw a loop to my guy in the control room right now because there's, I want to talk a little bit more about the bigger picture, about what you guys have in plan. There's some stuff coming up in the fall we want to take a look at. So yeah. I'm going to change the format a little bit here and just to prepare Michael in the booth, we're going to go to a commercial now for 60 seconds. And I'd like to return to these guests just to wrap up and to get that, the details on the, uh, what's happening this fall. Okay, right. so uh, stay with us. Mornings with Lou Ann and Tim on TV. We'll be right back.
We're back again with Lauren and, well, uh, White. Uh, Dawn. Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you had a first name. And Adrian. Uh, two from Algoma University and Adrian from the Sioux Community Career Center. We were talking about um, the career conference coming. <laughs> it's live, Lauren. <laughs> Stuff happens. Um, it's a good thing I remember your. The only reason I remember your name is because <laughs> your family rents a cottage to my sister. <laughs> Welcome to Sault Ste. Marie. We all know each other. Uh, so anyway, I want to talk a little bit about um, the the big picture. You were sure. talking about the funding that you have yeah. received, and that there's probably some more coming up, or is it the same well, funding? It's the same funding. Okay. So the funding um, is through the Career Ready Fund through the Ministry of Advanced Education and Skills Development. It's for a year-long project, and this event is really the kickoff oh, this to is what's going to be happening over it. the year. Cool. So the um, funding allows yes. us, in partnership, the Sioux Community Career Center and Algoma University, to develop a new graduate transition program that's more of a formalized structure, as Adrian was mentioning earlier. So when um, students in their final year of university come back to school in the fall, they will have the option to register and participate in a year-long series um, of workshops and uh, supports to get them job ready. When they graduate, they'll already have had uh, career mentorship, a coach, they'll have had workshops about translating uh, what they're learning in terms of their discipline into skills and articulating those skills and knowledge that the employers are looking for. And uh, yeah, so they'll be able to participate in a program, they'll be able to get uh, formal recognition uh, for it, and we'll be developing the details of that program over the summer to mm -hmm. launch in the fall. But this event is important because we wanted to do something in the short term for those students who are graduating this year. Um, but students coming into their final year next fall will have great opportunities as well. So it would the... Would the hope be then that if this pilot project, I mean, we would call this a pilot project yes. probably then, yep. if this does well and you, and you get um, significant results mm -hmm. and the data proves that this has been a worthwhile venture, is this something that could be carried on then? Um, would there be room in a budget for this or would mm -hmm. there be continued funding available? Abs well, that's the idea. There may not be continued funding available, but we will have in mind throughout the development that we want to develop something that's sustainable. Excellent. So we want to, it makes sense for us to be working together and I think given our current uh, resources, we can do that. Um, we just, this gives us a way to try some things out, see what works, and then continue on. I would imagine you would have had to present its sustainability to, in order to get this grant yes. anyway. So you would have had to uh, affirm, how long has this been in the works, this conference, or this, for the, for the grant? Uh, for the grant, we started working on it in late fall, mm -hmm. and then found out about it Oh, I can't remember exactly when. Well, I that, think but in congratulations, uh, late winter, early congratulations, because I know there's probably a lot of institutions that are applying for that kind of funding. Yeah. So yeah. great for Algoma University for getting that. Uh, are you all three? May I ask? Are you? Are you from? You, I know your family's from the Sioux. What about you? Um, are you originally from the Sioux, Don? Thunder Bay. Thunder Bay, Northern yeah. Ontario, Northern though. Northern Ontario. And yeah, from the Sioux. From the Sioux. Yeah. You know, I was telling you before we got together on air that a lot of the interviews I've been conducting in the last two weeks. Younger people, your demographic, um, you know, 30 and under. Uh, is that a compliment to anybody? I don't Thank know, you. No, really? <laughs> but uh, a lot of local people who are from the Sioux, who were educated either at Algoma University or Sioux College or else, but have come home again. So is, do you find that there's a shift in, in what's happening in the Sioux? We've been told so long that this is a blue-collar town, that we're, you know, uh, if you don't work at SR, if you don't work in, in one of those trades, that basically you're going to have to leave town. It's hard to be a young person here raising a family because there's no work. Do you find that is shifting? I, it, if I could speak to the moon, yeah, I, I do think it is shifting, or at least the, the momentum is starting to shift in that direction. I think the Sioux offers a lot of things um, uh, to its advantage. Uh, obviously, uh, cheaper living. It's easier to start a family here. Uh, easier to, if you are from the Sioux and you have those networks that are in place, returning to them, it, it's easier to leverage for that first uh, position. Um, and yeah, I mean, we have, a, we have an aging population in Sault Ste. Marie. Now, anyone that's looking down the road a little bit, with all these retirements coming up, that should, if the projections hold out, open up a lot of uh, good professional type positions locally in, in Sault Ste. Marie. So I think um, these, these socioeconomic trends are shifting to encourage just that start of that, that um, you know, that, that hope starting to come back, that real uh, excitement about coming back and, and starting a life here and finding a career here. How about high school students who are looking at their university career? Um, are there specific fields 
that are uh, hiring in Sault Ste. Marie that would be an indicator for them as to what they might want to study? Uh, is that something that they can find out from coming to see you? If, if you're a high school student and you're talking to your, um, I guess, your counselor, um, your, your uh, what do they call those people? Guidance yeah, counselor. That's what they call yeah. them. I never yeah. saw one. That's why I ended up with this job. Uh, <laughs> that's how I ended up here. Uh, anyway, you talk to your guidance counselor. Do those, are those connections there for high school students to look at possible fields that might keep them here in Sault Ste. Marie? If that's something that they want to do? Well, I think this partnership will help, and we already do do this to some degree. So the university hosts guidance counselors on an annual basis to come on campus, learn about our programming. The more uh, closely we work together, the more we learn about what's happening All in right. the actual labor, labor market. Um, and I think there are fields that are certainly growing locally, so computer science would probably be one. Oh, healthcare. Um, healthcare. healthcare. Yeah. Right now, yeah people. Social work. People. Social work. But importantly, too, is that... Um, there's also kind of the reverse way of looking at it where it doesn't necessarily at the undergraduate level um, in many jobs make a difference what field you study in because it's about those skills that you're learning. Good point. And as long as you're able to take your <laughs> discipline knowledge and translate that into skills that employers are looking for, you're well prepared for a very bright future. Okay. That's a great point. I mean, many people, I, I think the higher percentage of people end up in jobs that where their, their university degree does not directly relate. To where they, to where they end up. I mean, oh, it's right. that journey, right, of, of where you're going with this. All right. There's no need to feel pinned yeah. in by right. what you study. I studied wildlife biology. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so. Yeah. <laughs> Lauren. Stop talking so much. <laughs> I'm going to let you close off, Lauren, by giving us the final details of the career conference again. Where do they register? Okay, they can go to algomau.ca to register. There should be a link there that'll give you um, the registration. And it's 5.30 this Thursday until 8 o'clock at the machine shop. Well done. <laughs> nice talking to all of you. Thanks for joining us on Mornings, Lu Mornings with Luann and Tim. And uh, where am I? There, hi. We're going to go to a commercial now and we'll be back with more. Stay with us on TV. <laughs> Thanks, guys.